This week on Talking Pictures with Neil Rosen Talks Oscars. The Academy Award nominations are out, and we're making predictions. We'll tell you which Best Picture nominees have what it takes to go the distance. We'll let you know if there are any actors and actresses who have the coveted gold statuette all but locked up. Plus, we've got the word on what director is out in front with the best chance of winning. We've got all that and many more Oscar picks and thoughts coming up. Welcome to Talking Pictures Talks Oscars. The Academy Awards are on Sunday night, March 10th, and along with my panel of experts, we're making predictions. I'm joined by Perry Nemiroff from Collider, Bill McCuddy from GoldDerby.com, and Lisa Rossman from The Ruby Report. Let's start it off with Best Supporting Actor. Let's take a quick look at the nominees in that category. Because you love them too much. Enemies see each other better than friends. Don't get played out in the open with alcohol, you hear? Because then you'll cause trouble. And I know. J. Robert Oppenheimer, if he could do it all over, he'd do it all the same. You know he's never once said that he regrets Hiroshima? I want to know what it's like to love, to be the real thing. You're always reading now, Bella. You're losing some of your adorable way of speaking. All right, Best Supporting Actor. Perry, who do you think will win, and who do you want to win? This one feels like it's pretty close to a done deal. I have a very good feeling this is going to Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. He's just basically ticking all the precursor boxes right now. So it doesn't seem like it's going to veer in any other direction. But if I were Academy voter, my vote would go to Sterling K. Brown for American Fiction. I think he is just absolutely wonderful in that movie. A perfect example of a performance where... I think you can really feel a very talented actor taking an excellent screenplay and then making that role his own and kind of electrifying the character in a way that feels uniquely his own. I love him in that movie. Lisa? Uh, I agree. I think Robert Downey Jr. Um, has got this one. And it's annoying because it's like a gravitas performance with like a neon G. And it's the kind of crap that male Academy voters like fall for, <laughs> like hook, line, and sinker. I actually think it's the worst in what is the strongest performance category of 2024. Mm -hmm. I love Shirley K. Brown. I love Mark Ruffalo in this. But for me, it's, <laughs> it's actually my boyfriend, Ryan Gosling. He does everything a supporting performance should do, especially a male one. He makes his female counterparts shine even more brightly while he really interestingly investigates and finds a lot of new dimensions in what could have been literally a two-dimensional role. Look, it's going to be Robert Downey Jr. There's yeah. no question mm -hmm. about it. I would love Sterling K. Brown to win. I think he's the best thing in an otherwise just okay movie. Oh, and involved. number no. one <laughs> is Ryan Gosling. But Ryan Gosling doesn't have a prayer because that would be the double snub after none yeah. of the women got nominated to give it to Which him. Which is actually, give it to I don't him. think they're subtle enough to see that. <laughs> I actually think that, <laughs> yeah. that they're not thinking that way. I've, I've never been called smarter than the Academy, and that's the first time they've <laughs> ever done it. I, 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 I think it's Donnie <laughs> Jr., and I think he deserves it. I think he's one of the best oh my God. things in a long talky movie because he has a nice twist in his character at the end. So oh, you're not as smart as you are exactly as smart as the male <laughs> Academy uh, voters. I'm right. I agree with you all. I think this is one of the locks of the evening. Mm -hmm. I think it's Robert Downey Jr. The guy's been around for a long time. He's been nominated a few times before. He's never won. The guy was in Chaplin. The guy spent time in prison. Hollywood loves a comeback story. They love story. a comeback story. Uh, yep. he's but of all, all the, of all the all, upsets, he, Sterling K. Brown could happen before Ryan there Gosling won't be an upset. No, just, and I don't on, agree. On, uh, he's Iron Man. It, it's good. Iron Man, he's, he's, Iron. it's going to be our So who do you think it, should? What I, what I want out of these five, I would pick Mark Ruffalo. It's something I've never seen this I guy love him in that movie. act yeah. like. The, it's it's something he's never done before. Yeah. He's doing a weird Terry Thomas type of imitation. Yeah. If you remember that actor, yeah. you yeah. know, I think to he's the funny. That know and, it's, and, it, and it's and it's I wouldn't be so mad that's if the you one won. I would pick. All right, well, let's now. take a look at the nominees for Best Supporting Actress. You sit there, day after day, letting them pick our lives to pieces. I want you five. You told Hapo to beat me. No man. Use a damn lie. We have to always be extraordinary. But somehow, we're always doing it wrong. You really don't get it, do you? You don't even think of me. Of course I think about you. I watched you die. I feel like it's too soon. Like Curtis will think that I'm abandoning him, you know? This is the last place that my baby and I were together. Bill, who do you want? Who do you like? 
Well, let's start with who I like. The only nominee out of The Color Purple that I think was a much better movie than it got, and I wish people would watch right after this show, is uh, Danielle Brooks. Oh, I think mm -hmm. she's tremendous in this film, and uh, I would love to see, and this is always an upset, uh, category, although this year it's looking Mr. like it's not going to be. It's Devine Joy Randolph, and I think that's what everyone agrees is going to happen. Uh, again, I would love to see something wild happen in this category, even uh, America, but I don't think it's going to happen. I actually think the reason that The Holdovers is the most nuanced and the most powerful movie that Alexander Panion has ever made really has to do with Devine Joy Randolph's performance. And so I think she's going to take this category, and I am over the moon about that. Her grieving mother plotline could have just been a plot, like a backstory to support white guys figuring themselves out, but it has so much nuance and so much strength. I love her performance. I'm glad she's going to win. There are two categories we're talking about today that I think are done deals are like the categories you should not take a risk on in your Oscar <laughs> pool. It is another one. And this one yep. right here. Yep. Davine Joy Randolph is winning this without a doubt. Mm -hmm. If I were a voter in the Academy, I'd be very happy. I'm going to be very happy to see her win. I love her performance in that movie. I think my vote might go to Jodie Foster for Naya, though. Upset. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I could see loved that. that movie. And in particular, I loved everything she did bringing Bonnie Stoll and who she was and what she meant to Dina uh, Diana Naya to screen. As I walked away and I said to myself, like, man, I wish I had some someone like Bonnie in my life, and I think it's because of who the real person was, but also because of how Jodie Foster brought her to screen. She's right, Neil. Why don't you encourage me more? It's gonna, <laughs> it, it's gonna be Dave Vine, Randall. I agree with you. That's another one of the locks of the evening, and, and that's why I want to win. This is a category that often has surprises. I want Dave Vine, it's gonna be Dave Vine. Let's move on to Best Actress, and let's take a look. The world wants me to shut my mouth and sit down and wait to die. Storm, it's a... Uh... Oh, it's powerful. <laughs> because your pride makes your head explode before you can even come up with the little sham of an idea. And now you wake up and you're 40 and you need someone to blame. And you're the one to blame. What age are we living in? One can be as free as one likes without guilt or confession. Please, I know exactly who you are. These two are fighting and ideas are banging around in Bella's head and heart like lights in a storm. Lisa, your thoughts. Who's going to win? Who do you want to win? Lily Gladstone will probably win this, and I'm totally comfortable with that. I think it's, um, I think it's a, a very good performance in as much as it can be, because it's a pretty two-dimensional role in a muddled movie that really doesn't know whose narrative to center, so it's like a sweaty fugue. On the list, I think it should be Emma Stone. That's a fantastically, like, innovative, wily performance. Uh, Perry? My should win and will win are the same. It's it's Emma Stone. I do think at this point it is now. likely down to Emma Stone or Lily Gladstone. And, you know, while, while I don't think this should be a defining factor of who is most deserving, I'm trying to predict how voters might be thinking. And I think some folks out there might say, Emma Stone is essentially carrying that entire movie, she and she produced it too. Whereas Lily Gladstone, there is a debate: is it a lead performance? Is it, yeah. is it a supporting performance? A There's no debate. That's a supporting performance. It's a I believe that argument this, will though? work in Emma for, Stone's favor. For Scorsese, it's a lead performance because he's known for not even giving central ca female characters <laughs> lines. And of all the women in it, she has the most screen time, but she has almost no <laughs> almost screen, no screen time. time. She's yeah. very, she's very good in it, but I think it's going to Emma Stone. And One more person to consider, though. One thing that I think could happen, because Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone are the front runners. I hope you're going to say what I hope you're going to say. What if they start to split the votes and it allows maybe Sandra Huller to oh, emerge no. and rise I was with you top. until the Sandra There's Huller. a significant no, amount no, of anatomy no, of a full you, support I'll, I'll right now. I'll tell you what now. I would it's like possible. to see happen. What I would like to see happen is the split and it goes to Annette Bening, oh. who is playing a real person, took a year of her life to train for it. You know Warren Beatty is working the phones for the last 30 days calling everybody he knows. It's a, no, no one thought last year that Jamie Lee Curtis was going to win, and she no. did because of the Hollywood so card. So, and well, Annette Bening is maybe the, is not only who I I want to win, but I think we'll win. It's going to be Lily Gladstone because Thank the you. Oscars are a political organization and there's a lot of factors. It's not just the best performance, it's campaigning. 
and they have a chance to make history here by giving the that's first uh, Native American yeah, woman no, I think that's an, no, that's what an, I said. an Oscar like to, to, to kind of from going back many, many decades ago when Marlon Brando didn't accept his Oscar because, right. you know, Native Americans weren't, you know, presented properly. So now Oscar. the ghost of Marlon Brando goes so, up and accepts. I, you know, I think, for, I think for political <laughs> reasons, it's and funny. I agree with you, it is, it, I agree with you, it's not a lead performance. It is a supporting performance. But for those reasons, yeah, Emma Stone, it's between the both of them, but I say that Lily Gladstone, oh, for Lily's those reasons, going to get it. But because the one I want to win. Because they want to history. I but, actually I think you're right but on the that. one that I want to win and I agree with Bill um, it's not only the best yes. performance in this That's category the it's the best performance of yes. the year in I terms of actor actress supporting at lead level. is Annette Benning. Oh. all right anyway she's not winning but no it she's would be not nice if she Thank was she has been D, that, as my so. grandmother right. would say let's take a look at who's up for best actor if summer doesn't sing in you then nothing sings in you and if nothing sings in you, then you can't make music. The pacifist is opposed to using violence, but must be prepared to receive it. I can tell by your faces that many of you are shocked at the outcome. I, on the other hand, am not, because I have had the misfortune of teaching you this semester. We're in a race against the Nazis. And I know what it means. If the Nazis have a bomb. These books have nothing to do with African-American studies. They're just literature. The, the blackest thing about this one is the ink. Perry, talk to me. There's only two options in this category for the winner. It's either going to be Paul Giamatti or Killian Murphy. Mm -hmm. I will be happy when either of them win. If I were voting, it would go to Killian Murphy. I do think Paul Giamatti is gonna maintain the edge. Lisa? I think it'll be Paul Giamatti. And I'm, I'm, again, I'm okay with that. Like, I love his whole old soul, soul world-weary shtick. It's his calling card, let's face it, and he does it well in this movie. But honestly, for me, actually, it would have been Coleman Domingo's Rustin. I think it's a paradigm-shifting performance. And here's the thing. You guys are ranting about your girl, Annette Bening, but I have issues with most biopic performances where an actor is portraying a real-life person because it feels imitative to me. But this performance feels like channeling. It's uncanny, and I loved it. I don't love I love the movie, I love the performance. I'm extremely annoyed at this point that we agree a thousand percent. We don't compare notes before these shows as you're learning. And we can stand think, it when we I, agree. Yeah, I think Paul Giamatti will win because the, he gave a great performance, although four Oscar voters I've talked to said that they think that movie is a little small and Oppenheimer is the big movie, so mm -hmm. maybe Murphy gets it. Sweep, but I'm telling right. you a hundred percent that the one of the other big surprises that night could be Coleman Domingo. He's in two movies that people really, really, really like. Really they like. like him. I keep keep beating the drum for The Color Purple. He's phenomenal in that. Happen. And then you he's make completely that different as <laughs> Rustin. Paul Giamatti is going to win. And yep. he, I also want I'll be him to fine win with that. Because they want to write that wrong he, from sideways. He's, he's like, a, he's, you know, on the surface in the beginning, he's kind of a jerk to character. And, but there's so many layers when you peel back the onion. And I think Gi Giamatti really captures that. And he's done so many movies that, you know, Killian Murphy, yes, it is between those two, but I think Giamatti has the gravitas, as they say, and, and the history of like, yeah, let's give it to Paul Giamatti. The guy did great work in Sideways. The guy was in this movie and that movie. I think it's going to be Giamatti, and that's who I want to win. Okay, let's look at the big prize of the night. Here are the 10 movies up for Best Picture. Editors, they want a black book. They have a black book. I'm black, and it's my book. You know what I mean. So, as you know, the autopsy report is uh, inconclusive about the cause of death. Stop. I did not kill him. Hey, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Ugh. Hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. This is why I hate parties. That was a disaster. Total disaster. Speak for yourself. I was having fun. It just looks like murder. It's not supposed to be that way. You hear? I told him the front of the head. I said the front of the head, just like this, just like you told me. <laughs> in a future and our imaginings horrify us did he miss you i think he missed the 12 year old crybaby he knew a long time ago her brain and her body are not quite synchronized but she is progressing at an accelerated pace this here is the mauer from the lager also da haben wir auch noch Wein geplant, damit das zuwächst, damit man das nicht mehr so sieht. 
Lisa, your predictions on Best Picture. Who do you want? Who do you think? I mean, it'll be Oppenheimer, and I find that gravely disappointing. I have a theory that Christopher Nolan goes out of his way to find narratives that will permit him to feature only white men, and God knows the Academy still eats that crap up with a spoon. I honestly think this movie is bloated. I think it overstates its case beyond measure. And I also honestly am offended by the fact that they skim over the effect that those nuclear testing had in that area for generations of people in the in the, in and they the, had three the, hours to tell the story, well, and honestly, they left that and they, part and they out. And they left that part out where they yeah. told so many things over and yeah. over. To me, American fiction is sharp and funny, but it, it really is past lives for me. It's an astonishing it's first feature. I love that movie. I love it. It's my. It's one of my favorite films of the year. It's an astonishing first feature about the great losses and longings that, that happen with the cross-cultural immigration experience, and I think it's a really special film. I think it's going to be Oppenheimer, yeah. and I, I want it to be Oppenheimer. It was one of my favorite movie. movies of, of 2023. To, to your point just now, I, I don't necessarily think that was part of this version of the story that he was telling. I think it's a major achievement that he essentially puts the audience in the head of, of a physicist who is just on another level in terms of his thinking and, you know, in terms of its examination of what it means to have power and wield it and then have to carry around the repercussions of your actions and choices. Oppenheimer sadly is going to win, but I'm picking one that I wish would win with a, m a bunch more white people in it that you won't like, which is my Maestro, which I thought was oh one of the best movies <laughs> of the year. That's a stinker. And I, uh, and I think you, with you. I think you called it a masterpiece or agreed I loved, with me. I loved uh, Yeah, I mean, it's not going to happen. Stop laughing. It's, it's not going to I can pick what I like, and you, I, like, oh, my, I like that. Okay. Everything Everywhere All at Once opened the doors for poor things, but I don't, or I would love for past lives to win, but none of that's going to happen. Oppenheimer is the giant bomb the that's going to go list. off oh, and no, it's going to win. <laughs> I would love to see past lives win. I would love to see Anatomy of a Fall win. Yeah. But that's even I would be happy if poor things won. Yeah. But none of no, that's going to happen. It's gonna Oppenheimer, be, yeah. the movie that is too long. I'm sorry, P Perry and bored me. Bored. Um, that is going to win yeah, Best how, Picture. How many times Why? have you seen it? How many times have you seen oh it? Oh my God, are you asking us to see it yeah, more was than once? Yes. I, I am telling it's it's a big movie. It's a no. lot. It's a lot of heavy subject matter. I feel like I real I really admired it the first time around and thought and thought it was exceptional mm -hmm. in many respects. The second time around, when you know exactly what you're getting into and you can appreciate the nuance this and the a, craftsmanship, mm -hmm. it's just so abundantly clear that it is next level in so many respects. Really, you know what I'm other movie is true if you do you. visit it a second time and you're not going to believe right, what I'm going to say. I can't wait to hear Barbie. where this is going. Barbie is much funnier oh the God. second it time is. through. It actually Hilarious. is. I watched Barbie and a couple of times. I encourage everyone watching yeah. to watch it a second time because you missed a ton of jokes the first time. All right, let's talk about Best Director. Okay. The nominees are Anatomy of a Fall, Justine Triette, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, Martin Scorsese, Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan, Poor Things, Yorgos, Lanthimos, and The Zone of Interest, Jonathan Glazer. Perry, Best Director. Who do you think's going to get it? <laughs> Broken record. Will win, should win is Christopher Nolan. Oh, here we go. No again. one's going to agree with me at this point, but look at every single element of that movie. You made it your is, case, sweetheart. It is, it is <laughs> top, it's top tier filmmaking, and then you have this conductor who brings it all together beautifully. I think he deserves to have his Oscar look, win in this I category. Know you guys this are uh, I agree. I think. Uh, I don't agree that he should win, but he's going to win. Mm -hmm. Although I will say for should win, he hasn't won before. So I think this is uh, going to take care of that. Lisa? I think it should be Yorgos Lanthimos. He does everything I want a filmmaker to do. He's inventive. He's brilliant. The movie's practically four-dimensional. It like, jumps off the screen. It's beautiful She's looking. It's, it's smart. If there's an upset, that is, could happen. And if, if he is someone upset, who really recognizes so the challenge. potential and pleasure of 21st storytelling, and I love him. There won't be an upset. Christopher Nolan's going to win Best Director win. for Oppenheimer, but I agree with everything. Everything that Lisa said, I think that I would love well, then to we see Yorgos <laughs> Lanthimos win. I mean, if you want to talk strictly from a directing point of view, Yorgos Lanthimos. I mean, visually, the story, the whole thing. I mean, you know, he's the guiding force behind that movie, and that thing is a bizarre, interesting, wild uh, ride. Carnal. And, uh, <laughs> I, 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 that's who I would want. But yeah, it's going to be Christopher Nolan. All right, let's look at the screenplays. Bill, who's winning original screenplay? Well, you're going to be thrilled because it's probably going to be the holdovers, although let me tell you something interesting. I would love for it to be Anatomy of a Fall. I think that's a great film and it's because of a great script. 
But here's the wild card, and watch for it. If early in the evening, and that's when they give this out, past live snags this, it's very possible that that could go on to upset your holdovers and everyone else's Oppenheimer mm -hmm. and win Best Picture. I'd see so it. that's my crazy prediction <laughs> I would behind be all the other I if that were true, because past lives would be my first choice. But I, I think it's going to be Anatomy of a Fall. I think that's where it's going to get the love that the, a lot of Academy voters are feeling for it. Yep. I'm right there with you. I think Holdovers is probably the second most likely to win this award. I think it's going to go to Anatomy of a Fall because I don't think Anatomy of a Fall is going home empty handed. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the category where mm -hmm. it's going to get gold. If I were to choose the winner, it would be past lives. We're agreeing. And I, yeah, for, for <laughs> once in this particular episode. And I wouldn't mind if, if that whole narrative panned out the way you just described it because well, they I do love pair past off. lives. I, I, it's going to be Anatomy of a Fall and you know, I think it's a great movie. I mean, you know, it, it's I the kind of thing where you don't really know until the end of the film, the, uh, the last minute, whether she's guilty or not. And even when you walk out of the theater, you know, you say to yourself, well, did the jury make the right decision or not? You know, it, it's really well written. Um, I love Past Lives also. I think that's a great screenplay. Mm -hmm. I love the screenplay on The Holdovers, but it's, I, I think this one's going to an anime Strong category before. this year, actually. Very All right, strong. Lisa, who's winning Best Adapted Screenplay? You know, I actually think it's going to be Barbie. I think mm -hmm. that's going to be the nod they get, not Best Supporting. Um, that's how you honor Greta Gerwig. Yeah, and, and, I, and I have to say, I'm a little disappointed. I think that's the weak part of the movie. I've now watched Barbie three times. I liked it more each time. I like all the performances. I actually think the filmmaking is amazing. Gerwig de deserved a nomination for her direction. But she wrote the screenplay with her husband. And it, I think that the weakness of this film is that she defers to male vanities a little bit too much. <laughs> we because don't she know was that trying, in the writing process. Because she was trying to please her husband. That's my theory. I would like it to, I, I mean, honestly, I, I think if I if it's going to pick it would be American Fiction, which is a very strong mm. and clever adaptation. Bill? Barbie uh, is going to win and should win. Uh, she deserves it, obviously. And this is the one way they're going to give the $1.4 billion juggernaut uh, its due. I think it is extremely close for a will win mm. between Oppenheimer and Barbie. Mm. Well, I do think there is some weight to the idea that after all the snubbing, they're going to want to see Greta go home with an Something. Oscar. Yeah. There's been so many like negative turns for Barbie over the course of this Oscar season sure. that you know what? I'm just not buying it at this point. I'm going to say will win is Oppenheimer and my should win is poor things. They snubbed <laughs> Greta Gerwig and this is their way of kind of making up for that snub and they will give it to Greta yeah. Gerwig and her husband Noah Baumbach. Just like Ben Affleck it. won Argo without being the director, this is going to be the <laughs> consolation prize. Yeah. Look, it's really inventive and ingenious. I'm happy to see it win. Best international film, Lisa? I think it will be Zone of Interest, and I'm really okay with that. Um, it accomplishes what I thought was impossible, which is it offers a new angle on the Holocaust. Um, it, because what it, and I think it's a very timely one, which is it explores the imperviousness of privilege. It's a very strong film. But you leave out the most important point, which is it's also nominated for Best Picture, and that means it's got a lock on that, which yeah, is... Yeah, that's right. It's, I, I mean, think that's not maybe the most important point. Yeah. Yeah. A lock on that, how so? Well, because whenever they're nominated in uh, both you categories... You mean a lock on international yeah, features? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, if it's yeah, not for yeah, both, it'll win it's international. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I think uh, Zone of Interest kind of has this one locked, but I actually have two want to win choices in this category. Mm -hmm. I would love to see Society of the Snow Beautiful get the film. upset. Like what Beautiful an film. effective film. And then also Perfect Days is just like such a wonderfully tender, joyful movie. And it's going to be the zone of interest. Mm -hmm. Even it, though you hate that movie because no, it doesn't I don't show the, enough of the camp. I don't, I don't hate <laughs> the movie. I was disappointed with the movie. I think that the book was better because it juxtaposed between the idyllic life in the house of the commandant of the camp and the horrors of the camp itself. Yeah, we're not That's going fair. into this conversation and, and, yeah, so again. So I, I actually was, I, I think it was, I think it could have been done better. I don't hate the movie on any level, but I think that it will definitely win in this particular category. All right. Okay, best animated feature, Lisa, go. Um, I think Boy and the Heron will win. Um, I think it should be Spider-Man, actually. I love Spider-Man this year. It, it's, it takes the most fundamental metaphysical question since the beginning of time, which is what defines our essence, and it explores it so brilliantly visually with so much fun. I was, it's one of my favorite films of the year. He's a brilliant filmmaker. I agree 100% on both uh, the 
statements. Stop I think agreeing it will with win. me. It's freaking yeah. me it's, out. It's, boy, it's freaking me out. Uh, but uh, Boy and Harry is going to win. I think Spider Man Across the Spider Verse is going to win. I'm going to be I happy agree. to see it win. But I'm going to be very stubborn with my want to win and say something that's not even nominated because I think that's absolutely wild and absurd. Snub, snub. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. No, you had us until You're not that the only person I know. <laughs> well, it's it's going to be, I agree with it, oh, not on the Teenage Mutant Ninja, teenage ninja Mutant Turtles, Boy. but I agree something with Perry that Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is going to win this category. Listen, it's an incredibly well-made film. And the last one, uh, the, the last Spider-Man movie won, won the Oscar for, in, in You're this, right. this now, that's category. True, which is the, why uh, I actually think this one might not. No, I, I, think, I think it will. I think it will. But if it, if it doesn't, it will be The Boy and the Heron. Before we go, we're going to go around the panel with each member's final thought. They can come up with a prediction or a snub or anything else that they want to say about, uh, about what's going to happen or what they think is going to happen on the show. Let us start with my friend Lisa Rossman. Okay. My prediction is that the highlight of the night for me, emotionally, <laughs> will be Ryan Gosling singing I'm Just Ken, because he has done a bunch of remixes of it in a bunch of different contexts, and it has been awesome across the board. Shout out to the <laughs> oldest nominee this year. He's 91. He's John Williams, the great composer. I and him. I saw him recently on Antiques Roadshow where he was being appraised. No, I, I, think, uh, I think he's going to be great, and I think Jimmy Kimmel's going to be a great host. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and say one of the things that I'm most passionate about seeing win this year is the score from Oppenheimer. I love, love, love when something enhances the movie in a way that's undeniable, but also becomes something that I could take with me and listen on the go. And it's still really powerful to listen to all on its own, but it also brings me right back to the moment in the movie. And I think that okay. score does it exceptionally well. Okay, I'm going to come up with my final thought as a snub. And it's on my top five favorite movies of the year. And it didn't get any nominations. And that movie is called Flora and Son. But not only did it not get any nominations, what really annoys me, talking about music, is that I think that the song, Meet Me in the Middle, which is sung by Eve Hewson, who's Bono's daughter, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, is one of the best songs of the year. Forget about the songs and movies. just one of the best songs of the year, period. It was written by John Carney who wrote and directed the film. I love the, I love the song. Listen to it. It speaks for itself. And that's my biggest snub of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the evening. The Oscars are on Sunday, March 10th. Check them out. See how we did. Jimmy Kimmel's hosting. I want to thank my panel, Perry Nemiroff, Bill McCuddy, and Lisa Rossman. I'm Neil Rosen, and we'll see you next time on Talking Pictures.